Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. In the last video we found out that lithium iron phosphate or LiFePo4 batteries are ideal to power our 3.3 volt devices. Several of my subscribers wanted to get more information about this technology. This is what you get here. LiFePo4 is a relatively new technology and not as widely used as LiPo. But you get now sales also on AliExpress. The manufacturer of my sales is SoShine. I tested their capacity and the AA sales had the promised 700 mAh. Let's now compare this technology with the well-known LiPo technology. The first and biggest difference for our 3.3 volt project is that the voltage of the LiFePo4 batteries never goes above 3.6 volts and its nominal voltage is 3.2 volt. So we do not need a voltage regulator. Very handy. We can connect one cell directly to our devices. A second important difference is that the LiFePo4 batteries are safer than normal LiPo batteries. It seems also that a complete discharge harms them less than the normal LiPo batteries. Their maximum current is also smaller, so a protection circuit is not needed for this technology as much as for LiPo. The SoShine 18650 batteries, however, do contain a protection circuit. The capacity of LiFePo4 cells are smaller and the price of the cells are about the same as LiPo. So you pay a little more for a particular capacity of LiFePo4 batteries. On the other hand, you save on the voltage regulator. But how do we have to treat these cells? Let's start with the loading. It is simple to load such cells. I just use my bench power supply and set the voltage to 3.6 volt. Because the maximum charging current for my AA cells is 600 milliampere for fast charge, I set the current limitation a little lower to 400 milliampere. To do that, I short circuit the leads and adjust the maximum current on the power supply. To measure the current, I use my normal bench multimeter set to the milliampere range. So the diagram looks like that. The current flows from the bench power supply via the multimeter to the battery and I measure the voltage across the battery with a second multimeter. At the beginning, the discharged battery has a voltage of around 2.5 volt. If we start our loading process, we see that we do not get the full 400 milliampere. We only get about 200 milliampere. The voltage at the battery is only 2.6 volt. What is the problem? The problem must be the multimeter. Let's check whether we lose voltage across the multimeter. To do that, I replace the battery with a short circuit and measure the voltage across the multimeter at 400 milliampere. It is nearly 1.2 volts. So, it is obvious that this is our problem. But how can we solve it? we must reduce the inner resistance of the multimeter. This can be done by changing the range. If we change the range to 10 Ampere, the voltage across the multimeter drops to 0.012 volt. This is much lower than before. So let's start the battery with the 10 Ampere range. Now we get the full 400 milliampere. We even can go up to 600 milliampere. No problem. Now we can go on and charge our cell completely. This time I load it with the maximum rated load current of 600 milliampere. Here is the resulting curve. It starts with 600 milliampere and stays on this current for a long time. Then it rapidly decreases because the battery is full. The battery does not get warm during the whole charging process. Let's now check what happens if we overcharge an already full battery. We increase the charging voltage to 4 volts. The current increases for a moment and then is reduced because the cell voltage also goes to 4 volt. So no security problem. Summarized, we can load the LiFePo4 batteries with 3.6 volt and the limited current below or at its maximum charge rate. 
Not everybody owns a bench power supply. How can we load these batteries with a simple circuit? From an old video I still have a small and cheap power supply where I can set the voltage and the maximum current. Let's use this one and set the voltage to 3.6 volt. Not easy, but it works. Now we have to set the maximum current. I shorten the output as I did it with my bench power supply. Unfortunately I cannot change the maximum current if the device is short circuited. So we have to use a trick. We connect a small resistor in series. In my case 2 ohms were ok. If we now connect the discharged battery we discover that our trick was not completely successful. The charging current is 640 milliampere, but we can adjust it easily. Now the battery charges at exactly 600 milliampere, and we only have to wait. At the end we get a similar curve as before. The cheap device loads a little slower but also cuts off at 3.6 volt. So we have now a cheap solution to load our LiFe PO4 batteries. Now we can start to discharge the loaded cells. I use only 100 mA for this experiment because an ESP8266 with some sensors need about this current. The curve looks like that. It starts at 3.6 volt but quickly reduces to around 3.2 volt. After that the voltage stays nearly constant over a long period of time. At the end it quickly reduces to the cutoff voltage of 2 volts. Because the electronic load cuts off at 2 volts, the battery voltage is increased afterwards. This does not mean there is any energy left. As soon as you start to draw current again, the voltage drops nearly immediately to 2 volts. In the last videos there were discussions about how much energy is in the last part of this curve. Let's assume our device runs till 2.8 volt. We reach the 2.8 volts after 365 minutes. The 2 volts are reached just 6 minutes later. So the whole last part of the curve only contains 2% of the capacity. Therefore it's not worthwhile to do anything fancy to get a part of this energy. Summarized, this battery technology is very promising for our 3.3 volt projects. Safe, not too expensive and simple to use. Beauty! I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!